Hello, Bronx Middle School Math. So the purpose of Unit 1, Lesson 1 is to apply the geometric vocab that we learned in class in the previous video into recognizing the attributes that we see in shapes. And knowing and recognizing the attributes that we see in shapes is important because that is how we categorize them. That is how we label them. So let's begin with the fun little activity of looking at this house and labeling all the shapes that we see. So pause the video and take three minutes to label all the shapes that you see in this house. Ready, go. Okay, now that you've unpaused the video, let's go over the answers. So here's the answer bank. And let's see if you got them correct. So the roof tiles are parallelograms. We can tell that they're parallelograms because the opposite lengths or the opposite sides are congruent in length and they're parallel. The roof as a whole is a triangle. And we know that it's a triangle because it has three sides, but also it could be an equilateral triangle because all three sides are congruent in length. Now this little shape right here, that's a rhombus. We can say that that is supposed to be the, uh, the sunlight window, you know, to let in natural light, help the resale value of the house. The sunlight window is a rhombus and opposite lengths are going to be parallel and all four sides are going to be congruent in length. So they're congruent in length. And here, let me change the color so that we can see that better. And they, they are parallel. This side is parallel to that one. And so opposite sides are parallel and all four, all four sides are congruent in length. The house as a whole, the yellow house is a trapezoid. And remember, a trapezoid has at least one pair of parallel sides. This will be the lengths that are parallel, the sides that are parallel. A kite. The two windows on the side, those are the types of windows that like, you know, when the UPS man comes or anybody rings the doorbell, the dog barks, comes, starts barking right here. Here, here's the dog. Getting ready to bark. Anybody who comes up. So the dog window, those are kites. And kites have two pairs of links that are adjacent to each other, but they're also congruent. So these two links, they are congruent, they're equal to each other, but they're adjacent. What does adjacent mean? It means next to. So they're not across from each other, like we would see in this rectangle. See, in the rectangle, the links are congruent, but they're across from each other. In the kite, the links that are equal to each other are next to each other. So it has two pairs of congruent links that are adjacent to each other, a kite. And as I just said, the, this is a rectangle. The door is a rectangle, not not. So let's do a quick checkpoint. Do this again, pause the video, and see if you can get a quicker time on this activity. Ready, go. All right, now that you've unpaused the video, let's check our answers. Parallelogram, the roof tiles, the triangle, roof as a whole, a rhombus, sunlight roof to help the resale value, kite, the dog window, Remember, these are the dog windows. That's the dog. Boom. Trapezoid, the yellow house. And rectangle, the door. Okay, let's go into a quick vocabulary review. If you watched the previous video, which was geometric vocab, this should be pretty easy for you. But even if it's not, that is why we're here. We are here to get it right and practice. Attribute. Attribute and properties have the same definition. It's a characteristic belonging to an entity, an object, or a shape. It helps us describe it. 
parallel lines are two, two sets of lines that will never meet or intersect. They have the same slope, so they will never touch, meaning they go in the same direction. Look, they, these lines are never going to touch. But if they were like this, these lines are eventually going to touch futuristically right here. But since these lines are going to go in the same direction, they're never going to touch. Perpendicular. It's when two lines are intersecting and form a right angle. Right there. That's, we can, a right angle is labeled by that little square, which indicates 90 degrees. So when two lines intersect perfectly to form 90 degrees, that's perpendicular. We can see this in, you know, um, a stop sign. So when two roads intersect at each other, here's a stop sign. This forms a 90 degree angle. We can see parallel lines in like a railroad track. The two sets of tracks like this, parallel. Or we can see it on the blue lines in your notebook. They're parallel going that direction. Right angle. So as we previously stated, a right angle is 90 degrees and is labeled with the little square in the corner. Acute is any angle that measures less than 90 degrees. We can think of it as like, you know, when something is little, we say it's cute. So it's less than 90, it's little, it's cute, a cute angle. Now obtuse is the opposite. That's fat. When an angle is fat, when it's more than 90 degrees, that is an obtuse angle. See, this, this angle is fatter than 90 degrees, but this angle is smaller. It's acute. Congruent. Congruent is the word we use when we say something is equal to or the same size. Polygon. A polygon is a plane figure, so two-dimensional. It's flat. Two-dimensional, when we say that, it's just like this, flat. A 3D figure would be something like this or a pyramid. No, 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 no. We are not doing that. We are focusing on two-dimensional. So a polygon is a plane figure, two-dimensional, with at least three straight sides and angles. So. As you can see, there are several types of polygons. We have triangles, quadrilaterals, pentagons, hexagons, octagons. As long as it has at least three sides, it is in the polygon family. Triangle. A triangle is, as we just said, it's a type of polygon with three edges, corners, and sides. Now, just as there are several types of polygons, there are also multiple types of triangles. Triangles have many members of their family, as we can see here. So one type of triangle is scalene. That is where all sides of the triangle are different lengths. So you're going to have three different lengths on the triangle. So let's, right here, this, this triangle, that would be a scalene because all three sides are different lengths. That's a different length, that's a different length, and that is a different length. Scalian. Isosceles, on the other hand, is where two sides are the same length and only one side is different. This pink one right here, that would be isosceles. Let me label it really quickly. Asasobis. And look, it's very tall because these two lengths are the same. They're congruent. Equilateral. That is where all sides are congruent or all sides are equal to each other. Equilateral, equal to each other. 
Can you all point out which triangle in this picture to the right would be equilateral? It would be this one. I just had a door the explorer moment and I apologize. I'm <laughs> doing the awkward pause. Where's the equilateral? There it is. Okay, I promise never do that again. Pinky promise. We're moving on. We are growing from this experience. I'm not doing that again. Okay, so this would be the equilateral triangle because all three sides are equal to each other. And again, we can tell by these little dashes. Now, right triangle. A right triangle is any triangle that has a 90 degree angle or AKA, also known as a right angle. Now, remember what we said the right angles were labeled with? The square boxes. So this triangle is the right triangle, but wait. This triangle also has three different links. These three sides are different in length. But can it be a right and a scalene triangle at the same time? Is that possible? Can it be two things at once? Yes, it can. This triangle, its full name would be a right scalene triangle. That is its full name. That is when we recognize it's all of its attributes. So it could just be a scalene triangle. Yes, it could. But if we want to recognize all of its attributes, we would say it is a right scalene triangle. And again, we could just say right triangle. That would be correct. Oh, I accidentally erased the E, excuse me. But we want to recognize all of its attributes. So it is a right scalene triangle. Can y'all find no, 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 no. I don't want you to find. I want you to label this triangle right here. Take 10 seconds to write down your answer to what would be the full name for this triangle. Ready? Go. Okay, now that you've unpaused the video, let's give this triangle its full name. It would be a right isosceles triangle. And that is because it has the right angle and then it has two sides that, that are congruent in length. Now, and just not just to be fair and inclusive, this triangle right here is scalian because all lengths are different sizes or all sides are different lengths. Excuse me. So remember, we want to make sure that we give triangles their full name. We want to make sure that we acknowledge all of their attributes. Continuing on with vocabulary, quadrilateral. This is another type of family within the polygon family. It's a flat shape with four sides. Four sides. So remember, triangle was another family within the polygon family, another section of the polygon family, but they just had three. Quadrilaterals have four. And there are several types of quadrilaterals. We can have kite, rhombus, rectangle, square, or trapezoid. Now a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. It has four sides with at least one pair of parallel sides. So these links are parallel right there. Those are parallel. And so since it has at least one pair of parallel sides, it would be a trapezoid. Now, a parallelogram is in the quadrilateral family. Opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. So right here, the, these red lines, they're going to be congruent in length and they're going to be parallel. Now these blue lines, they're also going to be congruent in length and parallel. Well, okay, this parallelogram, 
it does have at least one pair of parallel sides. So is it possible for this parallelogram to fit the definition of the trapezoid? Is that possible to have two titles? Yes, it is. So this parallelogram fits the rules for the trapezoid. So a parallelogram, it is part of the polygon family because it has at least three sides. It is part of the quadrilateral family because it has four sides. And it is part of the trapezoid family up here because it does have at least one pair of parallel sides. Moving on, rectangle. A rectangle is a type of quadrilateral where it has four right angles. Every angle in the rectangle is 90 degrees. Boom. Opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. So the blue sides right here, congruent, congruent, parallel, parallel. The red sides, congruent, parallel. So a rectangle, let's, let's try to figure out all the families that it is a part of. So it has at least three sides, so it's part of the polygon family. Okay, what else? It has four sides, so it's also a part of the quadrilateral family. It does have at least one pair of parallel sides. So a rectangle does, does fit the rules for a trapezoid, so it is part of the trapezoid family. And this parallelogram does have two pairs of parallel sides that are opposite of each other and equal in length. So it is also part of the parallelogram family. This rectangle is a part of a lot of families, but shapes can do that. It can have multiple characteristics or multiple labels and titles. So let's review really quickly. A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of congruent links. Well, a rectangle definitely fits that description, so it too is part of the parallelogram family. A kite. A kite is a quadrilateral because it has four sides and has two pairs of congruent links that are next to each other. So when something is next to each other, we say adjacent. So you see how these blue lines, they are not across from each other, as in the rectangle up here. No, they are next to each other and they are congruent in length. That is how we form a kite. So these blue lines, they're congruent in length and they're adjacent to each other. And these red lines are congruent in length and they are adjacent to each other. A rhombus is a part of the quadrilateral family. All sides are congruent in length and opposite sides are parallel. So all four sides are going to be the same length. So we could say four feet, four feet, four feet, four feet. I'm making a pool. I want it to be rhombus shape. It's going to be four feet all the way around. Not the biggest pool, but hey, we work with what we have. Work within my budget, y'all. Okay, so they're all congruent in length, but opposite sides are parallel. So these are going to be parallel to each other, and these right here are going to be parallel to each other. Well, this rhombus seems to have fit the description of a square because a square is also a quadrilateral 
with four equal straight sides and opposite sides are parallel. What's the difference? So all sides are congruent. That's the same as a rhombus. Okay, check. Opposite length are parallel. Same as a rhombus. But what's the difference that y'all can see between the square and the rhombus? It's going to be the 90 degree angle because a square has four right angles. A rhombus does not because if a rhombus had four 90 degree angles, then it would just be a square. As we can see here, this L, this little box in the corner right here, that lets us know it's 90 degrees. But this angle right here seems to be much bigger than 90 degrees, much wider. What was that? How would we describe this angle? Obtuse. And then this little one, oh, it's little, so it's acute. Acute. Now let's, let's see what families the rhombus is in. So the rhombus has at least three sides. So yeah, it's a part of the polygon family. Polygon. Now, um, let's see what else. Okay, it, it has four sides, so it is part of the quadrilateral. And it does have at least one pair of parallel sides, so it's part of the trapezoid. And it does have two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of congruent links, so it's part of the parallelogram family also. I'll just spell that out. There we go. And same for the square. The square is part of those families also. It is part of the polygon family, quadrilateral, trap, trapezoid, and parallelogram family. We use attributes to figure out which families or which labels that shapes are a part of. That's why it's important to look at the attributes of, oh, they're equal the sides are congruent and links. Oh, opposite sides are parallel. We use those types of attributes to realize what families that shapes are a part of. Checkpoint. Okay, let's go through vocab again, or apply vocab to answer these questions and make sure that we can really understand how knowing the vocab, knowing the attributes affect shapes. So what is an attribute and or property? What are examples of attributes and properties and shapes? Pause the video and fill out these questions. Okay, now that you've answered these questions, let's go on to the answers. An attribute or property, these are characteristics that belong to an object or shape. They're details about the shapes that we notice and helps us label them. What are examples of attributes or properties and shapes? Attributes and properties describe the characteristics of a shape, and they, they help describe the geometric rules that particular shapes follow. So a shape with four sides, four sides, that would be an attribute. That would be details that we notice and help us label it as a quadrilateral. A shape with the characteristics of four sides, two pairs of parallel sides that are congruent in length and all angles are right angles, that would help us characterize it as a quadrilateral, a parallelogram, also known as a square because all lengths are equal and there are four right angles. What are parallel lines? Draw a set of parallel lines. What are perpendicular lines? Draw a set of perpendicular lines. I'll give you 10 seconds to fill this out. Here are the answers. Parallel lines are a pair of lines that will never meet or intersect, no matter how far they go. They have the same slope, meaning they go in the same direction, so they will never touch. 
Perpendicular lines, again, quite the opposite. It's when they intersect and form a right angle. When can we see parallel lines in our real life? Where do you see those? You see parallel lines on su subway tracks. Parallel. We see parallel lines in our notebook paper on the blue lines. Perpendicular, we can see that at a stopway. Boom. That's, okay, let's say that's 70th Street and 5th Avenue. 90 degrees. We can see it on a cross. We can see it on a T. That looks like a T to me. Let's spell my name. Tharp, 90 degrees. Geometric rules. So here we're using the vocabulary in applying the geometric rules to categorize the labels, the families that shapes are in. Polygon, a plain figure with at least three straight sides. And remember, there are several types of shapes within the polygon family. We have triangle, quadrilateral, trapezoids. Trapezoids and parallelograms are types of quadrilaterals, but polygons could be triangles, quadrilaterals, hexagons, octagons, so forth. So remember, a triangle is a three-sided shape. Boom, boom. And remember, there are different types of triangles. We have scalene, all different links, isosceles, two different, or two congruent links, excuse me, isosceles is where two links are equal in length. And equilateral, they're all, all, all three sides are equal in length. Quadrilateral, four sides. Trapezoid, a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides and congruent sides. Excuse my terrible handwriting, y'all. It's tough writing on the screen. I can blame it on technology, but I'm just as, my handwriting is just as bad on paper and pen. So checkpoint. If a shape is a plane figure, two-dimensional, with at least three straight sides, what is it called? What did we say that was? It has at least three straight sides. It's a polygon. And remember, there are several types of shapes within a polygon. Triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, octagon. What is a shape with, it's a two-dimensional figure and has three edges and sides. I know this is too easy for y'all. Y'all know what this is. It's a triangle. Now, the labels of a triangle is that it's in the polygon family and, of course, in the triangle family. If a shape has four straight sides and four corners, what is it called? Oh, goodness. Four sides. Okay, a, sh a shape with four sides. Quadrilateral. I knew y'all knew this. Okay. A quadrilateral. Remember, there are several types of quadrilaterals. There's parallelograms, trapezoid, square, rectangle, rhombus, kites. So many types. If a shape has four straight sides and at least one pair of parallel sides. Now, at least one pair of parallel sides. What is that called? I know you know. Show me that you know. A trapezoid. See, these lines are parallel. We can draw a trapezoid because if you just say it needs to have one pair of parallel sides. Okay, well, I'll just go ahead and draw parallel sides. Those lines are parallel. They're not equal in length, but they are parallel. But it has four straight sides. Okay, so I first have my parallel lines. And then you tell me that it has four sides. Okay, so all I have to do is connect them. I have four sides. Two of which are parallel. Trapezoid. If a shape has four sides two sets of parallel sides and two pairs, two sets, we'll say sets, of congruent sides. 
what is the name? So two sets of parallel sides and two sets of congruent sides, what would that be? Parallelogram, of course. Congruent, 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 congruent. Parallel, 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 parallel. We love to see it. Now, all the labels that apply to a parallelogram, polygon, it does have at least three straight sides. Quadrilateral, it does have four sides. Trapezoid, because it does have at least Okay, so it is considered a trapezoid because it does have at least one pair of parallel sides, and it is a parallelogram because it has two parallel sides and two congruent sides. So this parallelogram would go to a lot of Thanksgivings of families because it is a part of the parallelogram family. Okay, so you got to go there for Christmas, and it's part of the trapezoid family, so you have to go there for Thanksgiving also. And it is a quadrilateral, so you better show up to their birthday party. And it is in the polygon, so it's going to the polygon family reunion. This parallelogram has busy holidays, I'm telling y'all. So we use the attributes to figure out which families shapes are a part of. Explore. Guess my rule. We're going to do this activity in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this vocab review in applying the attributes we see to figure out which family shapes are a part of.